are going to quickly cover some fluid and medication math problems in this lecture. First, we're going to start with fluid math. So we are ordered, and actually, let me preface this by saying not all of these uh, fictitious problems or fictitious fluid orders or drug orders are going to necessarily happen. Um, some of them may make zero sense, uh, but it's just for the sake of practice. So we are ordered to give 1,000 milliliters over five hours with a 10 drop set. So um, you may be, you may ask a few different instructors or a few different paramedics on how they would lay out some of these problems. Um, but I'm just going to walk you through how, how I personally do these. So I need to give 1,000 milliliters over five hours with a 10 drop set. So the first thing I do is I take my 1,000 mLs and I multiply it by my drip factor. So in this case, my 1,000 mLs times my 10 drop set is 10,000 drops. So over the course of five hours, I need to give 10,000 drops. So we need to figure out how many drops per minute are we going to administer in order to fulfill this order. And we are given time in hours. So we need to convert that five hours over to minutes. So to do that, we multiply five hours by 60 minutes, and that gives us a total of 300 minutes. So now I need to take my total amount of drops needed, my 10,000, divide that by 300 minutes, and what that will show is 33.33 drops per minute for 300 minutes or five hours is what will be necessary in order to give this. Now, again, not incredibly feasible, uh, probably an order you're never, ever going to see. It's just for the sake of practice. But when we get this 33.33 drops, we cannot give 0.33 of a drop. So we either need to round up or round down when we come up with a decimal point um, for any type of drop. So in this case, 33.33, we are going to round that down because it is less than 33.5. Um, anything above that 0.5 would be rounded up. Anything below that 0.5 would be rounded down. So we are going to say we would give 33 drops per minute for 300 minutes over five hours in order to give our 1,000 milliliters over five hours with our 10 drop set. The next question is 100 milliliters over six hours with a 60 drop set. I'm going to go through the same exact process here. So 100 milliliters using a 60 drop set. So 100 times 60 equals 6,000 drops. That is the total number of drops that I need to administer over six hours. But we need to figure out how many drops per minute do I need to give in order to achieve that. Six hours times 60 minutes equals 360 minutes. So I need to give my 6,000 drops over 360 minutes, which will bring me out to 16.67 drops per minute for those 360 minutes in order to fulfill this drug order, this fluid order. So 16.67, uh, that is above 0.5. We would increase that or round that up to, six, uh, to 17 drops per minute. 250 milliliters over one hour with a 60 drop set. So I'm going to take my 250 milliliters and multiply that by 60, which gives me 15,000 drops. So I need to give 15,000 drops over one hour. One hour is 60 minutes. 15,000 drops over 60 minutes would be 250 drops per minute for 60 minutes. Um, impossible, but that's what the math would come out to tell us uh, that it would need to be. So those were <clears throat> three fluid math problems. And again, some of those did made no sense at all, but they don't have to, to practice and to get down the concept. So you can make up those numbers, take the, uh, the way that those problems were worded, put in your own numbers and work through them that way until you get a good, good grasp on how to calculate fluid rates and drip rates. 
Now we're going to look at some med math. So there are two formulas that I would recommend you know uh, prior to going into the registry. And if you know these two formulas, you can probably figure out any medication math problem that you are given. So if you're being asked to give like an IV push medication, order over supply. That is the formula. What is my order and how is the drug supplied? And we're going to look at that. If you're being asked to give an infusion of a medication, order over mixture, or you could say order over supply, multiplied by your drip factor. So what uh, drip set are you using? Are you using a 10 drop set, 15 drop set, or a 60 drop set? Um, now, generally, we're going to be using a 60 drop set. So we need to give 250 milligrams IV push of calcium chloride, and it is supplied as one gram in 10 mLs. The very first thing we need to do is find our concentration and not only find our concentration, but we need to take note that the medication is supplied in grams and my drug order is in milligrams. So I need to convert that down to milligrams to make sure that we're on the same playing field. So one gram and 10 mLs means 1,000 milligrams in 10 mLs. And if I carry out that math problem, 1,000 divided by 10, I am left with 100 milligrams per mL. So for every one milliliter of fluid that I have, it contains 100 milligrams of calcium chloride. So remember the formula. This is an IV push question. Order divided by my supply. My order was 250 milligrams. It is supplied as 100 milligrams per ml. 250 milligrams divided by 100 is 2.5 milliliters. So I need to draw up and administer 2.5 milliliters of this medication in order to have administered 250 milligrams of calcium chloride. So now we're going to get a little bit more involved. <clears throat> you are ordered to administer four micrograms per minute of drug A. And to do this, you must mix two milligrams of drug A in a 500 milliliter bag. What is our drip rate? Again, find your concentration. Two milligrams and 500 mLs, but the order is in micrograms. So we need to convert that two milligrams to micrograms so that we are on an even playing field. Two milligrams and 500 mLs comes out to be 2,000 micrograms and 500 mLs, which comes out to be four micrograms per milliliter. Apply my formula, order divided by my mixture or my supply, multiplied by my drip factor. My order, <clears throat> excuse me, my order was four micrograms per minute. My mixture or my supply is four micrograms per milliliter. So four divided by four is one. Multiplied by 60, one times 60 is 60. This just comes out to be a uh, simple math problem. So 60 drops per minute is what I need to give in order to give four micrograms per minute of this drug. In this problem, we are ordered to administer uh, five milligrams per minute of drug B. To do this, we must mix three grams of drug B in a 250 milliliter bag. What is our drip rate? So again, <clears throat> find the concentration, three grams and 250 milliliters. We have to convert that over to milligrams so that we are on an even playing field. That is 3000 milligrams and 250 milliliter bag, which comes out to be 12 milligrams per milliliter. Apply your formula, order, over mixture or supply times your drip set. <clears throat> the order is five milligrams 
the mixture or the supply is 12 milligrams per milliliter. So we would do five divided by 12, and we would multiply that number by 60, which is gonna be our drip set that we're using, a micro drip set. And that comes out to be 25 drops per minute. So we need to administer 25 drops per minute of drug B in order to give five milligrams per minute to this patient. So again, remember your formulas. If it's an IV push medication, we are using order over supply. We have to find our concentration first so that we know exactly what we're working with and how much medication we have in one milliliter of fluid. If we have an IV infusion problem, it is order over mixture times your drip set or your drip factor. Order over supply or order over mixture times your drip set. Those are the two formulas that you really need to, go, need to know heading into the National Registry. Now, with that said, dopamine is obviously a common medication problem that you can see on the National Registry, although the medication itself is, is kind of falling out of favor in the pre-hospital setting. And we do have a few videos on dopamine uh, medication math in this course uh, right after this lecture that you can review and that you can look at. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to DM us on Instagram at PassWithPass Pass, or send us an email at team at PassWithPass.com and we'll be happy to answer them or help in any way we can. Thank you. So the question reads, you have been ordered to administer a dopamine infusion at 7 micrograms per kilogram per minute to a 186-pound patient. How many drips per minute will be needed to achieve this? You are using a micro drip set. So step number one in this problem is figuring out the concentration of the medication. So step number one is what is the concentration of the dopamine? Now, I have a picture with this that tells us what the concentration is. But in your program or on the National Registry, you're much more likely to just be given the information in the question that reads something like, your dopamine is supplied as 400 milligrams in 250 milliliters or 800 milligrams in 500 milliliters. And you will be expected to figure out what the concentration of that medication is just from that information. So we're going to act like this 1600 micrograms per ml information isn't given to us. So we have 400 milligrams of dopamine and 250 milliliters of volume. Well, the question is asking us to give a dose based on micrograms, not milligrams. So we need to convert milligrams to micrograms. To do that, we multiply by 1,000. 400 milligrams multiplied by 1,000 is 400,000 micrograms. So I have 400,000 micrograms of dopamine in 250 milliliters. Now I have to divide that out to figure out how many micrograms of dopamine I have in one milliliter. So 400,000 divided by 250, if you work that out, comes out to be 1,600 micrograms per ml. That is the concentration of our medication. Step two for this particular problem, we have to take the patient's weight in pounds and convert that to kilograms. So to do that, we would take 186 divided by 2.2, and we would find that that comes out to be 84.7. I'm sorry, 84.5. And we would round that up to 85 kilograms. Now, to divide by 2.2 is not necessarily the easiest thing to do in the back of a medic unit. So I'm going to show you another way that isn't as accurate as dividing by 2.2, but it'll get you pretty close. And to do that, we take 186 divided by 2, which equals 93, and then subtract 10%. 
So take 93 subtracted by 9.3, which equals 83.7. If we round that up to 84 kilograms. So we are one kilogram off from our uh, the textbook way of dividing by 2.2, which gets us pretty close. But for the remainder of this problem, we will just look at the 85 kilos. So now we have to take all of the uh, information that we've gathered so far, the drug dose uh, order, 7 micrograms, times the weight in kilos, which we just figured out, multiplied by 60. <clears throat> And that's going to be, because we're doing it per minute, we're multiplying by 60 seconds. We're going to divide that by our concentration, which is 1,600. So if we do that math problem, we come up with 7 times 85 times 60 divided by 1,600 we get 22.31 drops per minute will achieve my 7 micrograms per kilo per minute dosing that I was originally ordered from the doc. Now, we can't give 0.31 of a drop, so we would just take that and round it down to 22 drops a minute. So that is the formula for dopamine. The dose that's ordered multiplied by the patient's weight and kilos multiplied by 60 divided by the drug's concentration. Now the clock method for dopamine, I don't like it as much as, as getting a real definitive answer on the number of drops per minute that need to be given but I do like it for checking my work to make sure that I, I'm at least in the area that I need to be. So we'll draw our clock. Now I'm going to put my uh, micrograms on the outside. I'm going to put 1,600 at the top, 400, 800, 1,200. And on the inside, I'm going to put my drops, 60, 15, 30, 45. Now, from our formula, we said that we should be around 22 drops a minute to get to um, the dosing that we need. So 22, if I come down here to my drops, 22 should be... Let's say we're about right here, okay, on our clock. So our number, the total amount of micrograms per minute that we should be given, should fall somewhere between 400 and 800. So we know 22 drops a minute is what we need, but now we're going to figure out the actual amount of micrograms per minute we're given to this patient. To do that... We take our original order, which is seven micrograms, and we multiply it by the patient's weight. And that comes out to be 595 micrograms. 595 is between my 400 and my 800 on my clock. Lines up with my 22 drops a minute. So that tells me that my math from the formula above gets me pretty close to where I need to be, and it's a good way of uh, checking my work to make sure that I didn't make a mistake in the formula itself. So hopefully that helps. Dopamine isn't as intimidating as it seems to be. You just got to make sure you have all of the components of the problem to put together to come up with the answer. If you got any more ideas, any more drug problems that you'd like us to work out, please feel free to DM us and we'd be happy to do so. Today we're going to show you an easier option. Uh, we call it the street method, um, but I'm going to preface this by saying that the most definitive and accurate way to get a dopamine uh, calculation or a dopamine drip calculation is to use the formula method. Okay, so this method is going to get you close. It's going to get you very close, 
but the formula method is always the best way to get the most accurate dosing. Okay, but we want to show you this because we think it's helpful not only on exams, but also at 3 a.m. in the back of a medic unit when you need to give a dopamine drip to a patient. <clears throat> so before we dive into what the actual process is, uh, I want to emphasize two things, and I'm going to harp on this consistently throughout the video. What we're about to show you is good for five microgram per kilogram per minute dose order. And it is assuming a concentration of 1600 micrograms per ml. So this is good. This formula we're about to show you, or this method we're about to show you is good for five mics per kilo per minute. And the concentration is 1600 mics per ml. Okay, you have to know those two things. So what does it actually look like? So in our first video talking about dopamine drips and dopamine calculations, we use a patient's weight of 186 pounds, so we'll just stay there. Now in that first video, we also used a dose order of seven micrograms per kilogram per minute. We did not use five, we used seven, so the numbers aren't gonna be exactly the same. But we'll, we'll stay with the same patient weight just for consistency. So 186 pounds. If I needed to give five micrograms per kilogram per minute and my concentration of my dopamine was 1600 mics per ml, which comes out to be 400 milligrams and 250 mLs, 800 milligrams and 500 mLs, one of those concentrations is gonna get me um, my 1600 mics per ml. So if I have those two things, five mics, and a concentration of 1600, all I need to do, take off the last digit, subtract by two, and that gets me 16. 16 drops a minute will get me five micrograms per kilo for this patient. So let's check our work, and then we'll look at a few more. So if we do the formula method, which I said is always gonna be the most definitive method to do this and the most accurate method to do a dopamine calculation, five micrograms times 85 kilos, because that is 186 pounds converted to kilos, times 60, I'm trying to figure out how many drops per minute I need to give, divided by my concentration of 1600, that comes out to be 15.9375 drops. Obviously, we can't give 0.9375 drops, so I'd round that up to give 16 drops per minute in order to achieve my original order of five mics per kilo for my 186 pound patient. So let's look at another one. Um, I'm just going to pick a random weight, um, 221. So 221 pounds in order to get my five mic per kilogram per minute dose uh, for this patient. Take off the one, subtract by two, 20 drops. So 20 drops per minute should give me my five microgram per kilogram Per minute dose for this uh, 221 pound patient. So let's work it out in a formula. First, we need to convert our weight uh, to kilos. So 221 pounds is equal to 100.4 kilos. Now let's actually fill out our formula. Five micrograms times 100 kilos times 60 divided by 1600 gets us 18.75. Now, in the beginning of this video, I said that this is not the most accurate way the formula method is but this is gonna get you really close. Our method that we just showed you is gonna get you really close. So I came up with 20 drops. The formula method came up with 18.75. Now again, I can't give 0.75 of a drop. So if I round that up to 19 drops, 
the method that we did originally, which was 20 drops. We are one drop higher than what our formula method is. So we're still pretty close. So that's gonna help us out with patient care in the back of a medic unit. I'm, we're one drop off. And it's also gonna help us in determining what the correct answer on the exam is um, by getting us very, very close to what that formula method would give us. So just real quick, that only is that helpful with five mics, but it can also be helpful with <clears throat> a 10 mic order, a 15 mic order, or a 20 mic order. So if I had, if we knew my five mic order, if this will quit moving on me, was 20 drops, then my 10 mic order, we just double it because we're giving double the amount of medication. We're trying, we're not giving five micrograms per kilo per minute anymore. We are trying to give 10 micrograms per kilo per minute. So this would go to 40 drops. 15 mics would go to 60 drops. So it can get us real close to 5, 10, 15, 20 mics as we just double the amount of drops we need to give. But we can also make a better determination of those oddball orders. So let's say I am ordered seven micrograms for this 221 pound patient. I know that if five micrograms is 20 drops and 10 micrograms is 40 drops, seven micrograms has to be between 20 and 40, right? Probably somewhere around 30. So let's work that out and see what we actually come up with. Seven mics times, oh, we're not doing 186 pounds anymore, times 100, times 60, divided by 1,600. So seven times 100, times 60 divided by 1600 gets us to 26.25 drops a minute which lines up because that is between my 20 and 40 drops so hopefully this was helpful again it's a, it's a quick way um, to make a determination of how many drops a minute you need for that five microgram patient Typically, it's never going to be uh, off by more than one drop from the formula method. So it's going to get you really close to where you need to be. But again, that formula method is the most accurate and definitive way to calculate a dopamine drip infusion. Hopefully, this has been helpful. If you have any other ideas for videos, please feel free to reach out. And thanks for watching.